One of the key features of the Arcana update was to add a series of brand new weapons to the game. Perhaps one of the more interesting of which, the Bubonico, the second ever arm cannon to be added to Warframe. And today my friends we're gonna be diving deeper into this mastery rank 13 primary weapon. As always, my name is Lazar, and I got a couple of builds lined up. Something cheap, something affordable, that most tenors should be able to build, but rest assured, we also got the quote-unquote endgame set up with a Riven, Primods, and everything. That said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides usually take a new player-friendly approach. I'm gonna take my time and explain whatever I feel is necessary for newer players. So in case you're a vet, and you already know most of this stuff, please, bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Bubanico. This video is brought to you by me and all the fantastic people that choose to support the content. Thank you guys so much. Want to get access to fantastic perks such as loyalty badges, custom wallpapers and the option to vote on what I work on next? That's how this review happened by the way. Check the link in the cards right now or click on the join button which is next to the subscription button. You can support the channel via Patreon, YouTube membership or even Twitch subs. Links are in the description down below. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, our usual free shots. The Bubonico is only the second arm cannon to be added to Warframe, and this one is from the Infested faction, which means, well, being an arm cannon, you don't get personalized animations like you get for most weapons and most Warframes. It's also hard to match to your fashion. You can do it with Nidus, kinda, but you know what, I thought if I can't really match it the way I want to, I'm gonna go for a heavy duty contrast, we got Imperial Knight Vauban together with the Bubonico. Enough about that, what's important? Two fire modes, that is important, definitely in primary fire mode, this one is a full blown shotgun my friends, an automatic shotgun, like so. Spoiler alert, I like the weapon and it's pretty good, so if you wanna build it, go for it. Uh, accuracy test on a shotgun laser? What is this trickery? Well, it's actually not that bad. Take a look. Basically, all the little... It's not pellets. It's little dots, uh, arrows, land inside the crosshairs. Well, most of them. As you can see, there are this, these like little infested arrow things that stick to enemies. And the projectile flight speed is pretty good. But again, it is a projectile-based attack. So leading your targets is a thing. Did you notice my ammo reserves down to zero? Because this one charges by itself. Take a look at the rate of recharge of the ammo and done at the rate of about 16 to 18 ammo per second in 1.6 seconds the full magazine is recharged so you don't need to worry about ammo reserve dropping pads and all of that nonsense which is absolutely fantastic one more thing it also has a secondary fire and this one makes big bada boom explosion like that the range on those grenades is 7 meters pressing your secondary fire will engage the burst trigger one click Three grenades and these have projectile drop off you see that like that and if you aim straight up like so eventually they will make their way down so you can troll your teammates and yes they do stagger you and all whatnot they should kill you but there you go uh, kitty gloves in warframe what else was there oh yes they consume free ammo okay so free ammo per grenade you chuck three of them with a single burst right so you go from 27 to 18 in a single shot. And I think that's pretty much it. The damage drop off on these grenades is 50%, which is a bit of an issue. That's kind of a lot. You're going to get the full damage right in the epicenter of the explosion. And right at the edge, at the 7 meter range, you're only going to get 50%. It's a gradual drop off. You get it? Of course you do. You're fantastic individual elf at the end of the day. Uh, stats, yes. Let's have a closer look at stats to see exactly what we're dealing with. Mod capacity is 60 out of 60. And if you're Bubonico... Comes with only 30 out of 30 and well means it should. Jump into actions, plug in that Autocon Catalyst and yes, it's definitely worth fully building the Bubonico. 20 plat to have one installed, you can grind it from Nightwave, you can get a blueprint from the Daily Sortie and some events in Warframe also feature an Autocon Catalyst as a possible or guaranteed reward. What else? Uh, my weapon has been format seven times. Yes, don't worry, it's fine. You can get away with four to five. You can get away with four to five. Got a Riven, you might have to go to six. There is that. Is it worth unlocking the weapon Plexilus or Exilus slot? Well, yes, it is, because you can use this thing. Fatal Acceleration. 40% projectile flight speed will help you with the primary fire, and it will help you with the secondary fire as well. So, there you go. You can also use Silent Battery and make it silent, because why wouldn't you want big silent explosions? And whatever else. But again, from my point of view, best in slot, Fatal Acceleration. Accuracy. Who cares? Uh, 
Who cares? Again, it's a shotgun. You're gonna use it close up anyway, and the grenades have a big enough range, so you don't really care about it. Uh, if you wanna use the mod, which is vicious in your spread, this one. Let me show you the spread really, really quick, just to make sure I showed you everything. We're gonna put on that multi shot. That multi shot. Uh, spread from 50 meters, so you get a good point of comparison. It's fine. It's almost the same as before. And yes, the grenades sometimes kind of go off target. But again, considering the size of that explosion, again, it should be fine. And you can definitely use Vicious Spread. Let's talk crit chance and crit damage. And we're going to do an amalgam. For the primary, 25% with 2.3x. You know what? That's not bad. That's actually above average for the critical multiplier. But if you scroll down to the burst mode, you'll see... 3.5x critical multiplier, but with 3% base critical chance. You know why they did this? Because if this had a solid enough crit chance, there would have been little point to use the primary fire. Kind of. For a lot of players, you know? So they want us to kind of use it in tandem. That's what I believe, at the very least. Are critical mods worth it? Of course they're worth it. And if you crit, you got a Moomoo. Everybody knows that by now. If you crit, you Moomoo if it's a primary well, at least for the primary, that is. Fall off between 19 and 41%. And of course, if you go with Fatal Acceleration, as I recommended, you will increase the fall off 26.6 to 57.4. You're not going to have much of an accuracy past 25 meters anyway, so there you go. Uh, fire rate of 3.8, which is good. Magazine of 27, good. Multi-shot of 7 by default, my friend. 7 little arrows. Multi-shot will have a fantastic effect on this weapon. It's a shotgun after all. Noise alarming. Punch roll of 1.9 meters by default. Almost 2 meters. Free punch through. How awesome is that? Absolutely brilliant. Reload on 0 0.5. Now, it's important to clarify this. Your weapon will not have the full magazine in 0 0.5 seconds. 0 0.5 seconds is the delay between the magazine being empty, okay? And it's starting to reload. You gotta add 0 0.5 to 1.6, essentially, right? And you're gonna get to 2.1 for a full reload, but you don't need to wait for the full reload. You can wait for half a reload and start firing if you need to finish off Z target. Yes, yes, of course. Riven Dispel, one out of five, it's a brand new weapon, and these are, these are these rules, but don't worry, I got actually a Riven which is worth using on the weapon. Status per projectile, 9.3%, and this might seem small, but considering it is per projectile, it's actually pretty solid, trigger auto as before. And the damage, slash is top. What more do you want? Slash is top. When it comes to IPSs, this is the most powerful IPS right now in Warframe. And you also got Toxin on the weapon, which is both a blessing and a curse, and I'll show you exactly why that is. Now, for the burst mode, never mind the accuracy, who cares? And the crit, we talked about that. Same reload as before, status chance, sky high, 57%. But then again, it does need it considering how the secondary fire works on this one. The impact represents the grenade physically making contact with a target, but the damage is right down here with the 50% fall off, the 7 meter range, and the 143 viral damage by default. So they made it pretty easy, right? You pepper them with a couple of grenades, you put on the viral, and then you come in with a slash and you nuke them off. That's it. You know, it's basically built in hunter munitions experience, but without hunter munitions. <laughs> Again, uh, what is there to say? Oh, yes, let's talk about a standard build and I'll show you exactly why Toxin is both a blessing and a curse. And you got damage with point blank, multi shot with health chamber, critical chance, and critical damage combo between blunderbuss, ravage, and we'll talk about these two mods just a tad later. And as before, if you crit, you momo. It's simple, it's clear. Uh, what I would recommend you guys do, if you don't have prime mods, and by all intents and purposes, prime point blank will really help you a lot, as well as uh, prime ravage, you have this mod. It's called Laser Sight. This is what I encourage you to use. It's 120% instead of 90. You can even use both of them in tandem, if you so desire. There is room on the build. We got free option slots on this one. So you can go double crit if you really want to. Now keep in mind that with Blunderbuss alone, you'll go to 47.5. And with Laser Sight alone, as long as it is up, you're going to go to 55%. From my humble point of view, this is the way to go. What is next? Well, as I said, these are option slots from this point. It really depends what you want to do with the weapon and how you want to build it. Do you want to build it exclusively for primary, exclusively for secondary? What exactly do you want to do? If you want to build it exclusively for its secondary fire mode, you got to drop the crit. At least a critical chance and get bonus critical chance, a bonus additive after to work with a critical damage, yes? But we'll make a build that kind of takes advantage of both fire modes. I think that is the reasonable approach to this one. Vital on the weapon, right? I can make vital 
on the primary fire as well just by adding a little bit of cold. The problem that I add cold uh, with frigid blast, yes, but right now if I want to further add another element, I'm gonna have trouble because of the base toxin. Let's say I want to have vital heat. Well, that's gonna be problematic, right? Let's say I want to add blaze, right? Not scattering inferno. Well, then I'm gonna have something like this, blast and toxin. You get it? It's gonna be a little bit difficult. Tox, if I go tox right now and put it like so, right? Now I'm gonna get vital heat. This is a build you can go for. Okay, this is a reasonable approach. You got two of those Miami 6060 mods. You got Blaze, which is a terrific shotgun mod. Absolutely insane. Let's test it out like this, and then I'll show you why I don't recommend this build. There are a couple of variations, but again, something like this is definitely worthwhile. You got Heat, you got Vital on the weapon, you got that Slash. What more do you need? Level 120, Corrupted Heavy Goons, as per usual. Primary fire is up first. Boom, 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 baby. Look at that. Till 50%, you got 20 slashes, you got vitals, absolutely annihilate. Look at that. Or you can do this, jump up, or whatever. Pepper them with a lot of vital procs and then just touch them a little bit. Just touch them a little bit with that slash. Look at that. Look at that. How is that not absolutely bloody fantastic? It is a way you can go and blaze is definitely worth using on the weapon. But there are several other ways of building the weapon. Again, it does have free options as well as as, as far as I'm concerned. Mm. What else can we do? How about how about we just use 16060 mod? There's plenty of status on the weapon as it is, don't get me wrong. Over 100% status chance is definitely beneficial now in Warframe, so there is that. Here's what I like to do, a little bit of fire rate, just a tad of fire in your rate because you don't need to worry about ammo, essentially, right? So you can <laughs> fast unload, wait for the recharge, fast unload, wait for the recharge, no worries about dropping pads and stuff like that. So you can go with shotgun spaz. This one will give you 90% fire rate and you might say, hey, hey, use a... considering how the weapon works, isn't repeater clip a fantastic idea? Oh my god, you're right, but unfortunately, because of how the weapon reloads, the recharge mechanic, Panic, repeater clip doesn't function with weapons such as this. So it just doesn't function. D doesn't care. <laughs> sad faces, sad noises, all that good stuff. As for the final mod, well, you do have a couple of options. Allow me to highlight. Considering how the weapon works, considering the differences between the two fire modes, what are the stats that will help both of them no matter the circumstances? Multi shot? Damage. Even status chance can be argued, but I would say damage and multi shot are the best. So, what kind of options do I have? Vigilante armaments, easy mode, gameplay every single day. Always a good idea. Always. When in doubt, put in vigilante armaments. Here's another option that's also very good. Damage, not with blaze because that will mess up my combo right now. You can go with vicious in the spread like so and this is gonna be the next build i'm gonna be recommending 90 percent damage the same amount as point blank and we don't really care about the spread again it's up to you let's test out the, let's test out the weapon like so on the same corrupted heavy goons level 120. first straight up and then we're gonna pepper them with bombs. oh mama i like that don't you like that come on how do you not like that and it's fully recharged i mean it's done look at that beautiful and beautiful you got plenty of slashes from the weapons in it, uh, slash value and from hunter munitions as well. Look at that. Look at that. How beautiful is that? It's just a joy to use like this because of the fire rate. And since I'm not worried about bloody ammo, what's the issue? None whatsoever. This is the build I recommend. Uh, keep in mind that you might switch out Vicious Spread for more multi-shot. I'm a big fan of multi-shot, which is why I always recommend it. Let's try a couple of bombardments, shall we? Even that is more satisfying to use because of how fast it fires and it travels fast now as well. But as you can see, the damage it actually deals isn't all that a lot. So if you take a look even at the base damage, the secondary fire or the grenades don't really do as much damage. The grenades from my point of view are more to prime your targets with some statuses, right? In this case, prime them with some vital effects and then come in with a primary fire and nuke them. If you, from my humble point of view, the Primary fire is a lot more powerful than the secondary. But again, they do work in tandem if you want to use it like that. Uh, and I think that's pretty much it for standard builds. Why don't we talk about Rivens now, shall we? The dispo of 0.5. Yeah, essentially that's the, the, the number, 0.5, but you get 1 out of 5. So, 
in all honesty, it's not worth going for Bubonico Rivens right now. If the disposition was at least two little balls, then we can talk about it. But getting a Riven, which is usable on the weapon, will mean you're going to have to get a really good roll or spend a whole lot of plat. I mean, don't get me wrong, the option is, is yours, but I'm never going to recommend uh, Dispo 1 Rivens unless they get a whole lot more powerful. This one is a loaner from a friend, it's not mine. It's got critical damage, multi-shot damage, and minus impact. It's absolutely bloody fantastic, right? A Riven like this, of course, is definitely worth using. But even with this amazing roll on it, take a look at the values. They're simply not all that high. And what did I renounce? I renounced the multi-shot mod, Vigilante Armaments, or Vicious Spread. Again, that is your option. And we're gonna go like so. We also got Prime Point Blank and Prime Ravage on the weapon. Level 120, Corrupted Heavy Goons, as per usual. We're gonna go straight up, and then we're gonna bombard. Oh, that's beautiful. I love you, mommy. Oh, yeah, that is good. Look, look, look at that! This ball one. When you know exactly what to go. Definitely freaking beautiful. I love this gun. Honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of the first arm cannon. I kind of stopped using it, but I do love this one. I, what I do not like is the fact that I don't got skins and the fact that it ruins all the animations. There's one animation for all the Warframes. They don't have any sleek, cool animations to go with it. Hey, D! Where's the slick, cool animations for arm cannons, huh? Huh? Please? Pretty please? We're gonna bombard them like so, a little bit. Again, when it comes to the actual damage, you're not gonna see a whole lot, but now they are primed and ready for the massive amounts of destruction. I don't even need to go for headshots. I just can use the punch rule to get the slashes on my target. Now, there's one more thing which we can do, my friends. Bump up everything with Warframe Bobs, and I'm already aware you guys wanna see Harrow. Harrow Laser because the crit. Yeah, 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 fine, Harrow. Did you not learn? He's not more powerful than Lady Mirage, but I will indulge you with my... No, you, you always see this fashion. What about my Paladin Harrow? You like him? Or Priest Harrow? I don't know. It was a Harrow, Harrow. And this will actually match almost in color as well. Uh, Sentinel. Yes, it's a primary weapon, so you do need to go for it. Well, you need to. You can go for a Sentinel. And on that Sentinel's weapon, the Vigilante mods, armaments, offense, supplies, and fervor. 20% uh, chance to enhance critical hits, even if your sentinel dies and never comes back to life, you will still retain this bonus. Is it worth? Of course it's worth. It's not mandatory though. Nothing is mandatory in Warframe, trust me. Ah, uh, Harrow. Gross projection is meta, Yahoo! Arcane Avenger definitely on this one, even with Harrow's buff. And you still gotta go for Arcane Avenger. And Arcane Rage applies to all primary weapons in the game, 180% damage to primary weapons for 24 seconds. Keep in mind that Arcane Avenger's bonus, that 45% critical chance bonus additive after for 12 seconds, applies to your primary, secondary, and to your melee as well. It's one of the most powerful Arcanes in Warframe. These two can be farmed from the third Eidolon down on Cetus. I'm unclear of the Scarlet Spear event is ever coming back. If it is coming back, that's a much clearer and easier and more, I don't know, straightforward way of getting your arcanes. Okay. And pause then target so they can hit me and I can get my buffs and let's go to level 150. This is why it's not fantastic necessarily with Harrow, right? You want to use Harrow for the secondary fire, right? You make use out of that critical uh, damage and all whatnot, but the thing is... You gotta get a headshot with a grenade, right? Which is why I didn't take the critical chance mod off my weapon just yet, right? Laser sights and all that. His second ability will grant you fire rate as well as reload speed because we needed more of that now, didn't we? And take a look at what Hara can do. The priest of holy crit. Yeah, my brother. Look at that. Of course, that extra fire rate in this case doesn't really help me all that much. What I really need is a bit of precision to get the headshot so I can make use out of that fantastic extra critical chance. Oh, they're all dead. They're, of course they're dead. With this level of Warframe buffs, I would have been insulted if they didn't die. Now, let's see. Can I pepper them from all the way here? Let's see. This, this might be a little high. There we go. We got some hits. Hey, but no headshot. No headshot, my friends. Again, you want to get headshot with the grenade, which... Let's be honest, it's gonna be a tap on the difficult side, which is why, once again, my friends, as per the usual, we're gonna go for the lovely lady, Mirage Prime, and her fantastic buffs. This is a straightforward buff, you know, damage upon damage. Let's go this time with Dark Mirage, yes, this is, I'm in a foul mood, Mirage. Oh, that red is too red, too much red, let's go like this, okay, that's gonna be good enough. Let's quickly skim over the buffs. Corrosive projection with arcane rage. 
not precision. That's for secondaries and Arcane Avenger as before. We got the Sentinel and of course we're gonna be respawning the level 150 Corrupted Heavy Goons. Activate Empower! And then, wait, Empower! And then Mirage's free ability for a fantastic damage increase. And then her ever so lovely Colognes. Boom, baby! They're gone. Now you see them. Now you do. And of course, with Lady Mirage Prime, you can now you see them. Now you don't. Even with the secondary fire of the Bubonico. Let's see. Can I get a one? They're gone. They're gone. They might have been gone from the first one. Let's do that one more time. Just to be doubly sure they died upon impact. And in the meantime, let's draw some conclusions for this weapon. My friends, I love it! I love it! It's the best arm cannon in Warframe as far as I'm concerned. The only complaints I realistically have have to do with cosmetics, subjectives, uh, and all that good stuff. The usability is strong, the damage is strong, there's a little bit of flexibility in the build. Okay, granted, not a whole lot of flexibility, but still better than most. And as long as Hunter Munitions vital rules, what can you do, my friends? What can you do? There's nothing left for me to say, but recommend this absolutely glorious weapon, the Bubonico. Farm it, play with it, and love it. As always, my name is Ben Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, share, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And if you got any sorts of feedback for me, by all means, drop it in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below if you guys want to suggest any particular type of content. Don't worry, I'm getting to all the brand new weapons as fast as I possibly can. And the kit guns as well. And if you love the content, hey! Consider supporting us via Patreon. Until next time, my friends. Bye-bye.